problem is that in an advanced economy you need scientists in the future, you need engineers, and we are simply not doing that uh, good enough. You know there's uh, what is saying in Africa that it takes um, a village to raise a child. And the project came from this, this sense of urgency that something should start at a very early age to attract uh, students to uh, careers eventually you must work on their attitude, that they love science, science that they love uh, tinkering with things. And this simply doesn't happen uh, that uh, much in, uh, in schools these days. There's more to teaching what are in textbooks. We need to think out of the box, think differently. The range is basically very inclusive with regards to the, the scope of, of possible uh, links back into society. It's not a closed think tank where it's only going to stay at a university. What's happening now is that we are beginning to, to, to collaborate more because we're in the 21st century. The needs of the 21st century are different to the needs of the 20th century. You cannot work as an island, you need more collaborati collaboration with others. Um, I think there's so much going on in the country that education might be not at the forefront of things that we should focus on. So something like this, a conference like this, is really a good start, but we need to gain momentum from here. So it can't be a single entity. Without imagination, we'd be doing the same thing we've always done in the same way we've always done it. We're finding already, you know, if you look at the children of today, that the curriculum is just not cutting it anymore for the skills that we're needing. You know, we are, uh, we have tunnel vision maybe in the way we, we are executing our curriculum. Oh, if we only look at the results currently, the metric results, it is, it, it is very bad and obviously the foundation is, is, is shaky. As a result of, 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 of our circumstances in South Africa, a number of students, they go through schooling, but they don't develop the necessary skills um, to be able to engage with high school and tertiary uh, uh, school content. So what the conference is doing is trying to investigate ways in which we could be deliberate about developing those specific skills. We've got so much counting against us. We've got so many different challenges in this country when it comes to language, when it comes to qualification of teachers, when it comes to, I suppose, just people wanting to change. So many kids try and do the chemistry experiment exactly the way it's written in the book. And what they learn is not so much about the chemical reaction, but they learn how to follow steps. But for me, it's about the understanding. What do they know? What, do they understand? what can they apply? I think that what, what they need to do is to learn how to make up their own experiments, their own hypotheses, and then create experiments to either validate or disprove their, their hypotheses. Because they've got this inherent drive to understand on their own without me having to spoon feed, without having to go to the teacher says, or this is for marks. It's, so that's why I wanted to start so young, so that we've got that inherent curiosity, because I think a lot of schooling at the moment dampens curiosity. In the old times, this was never the case. Uh, I, we didn't ask questions, and the teacher did not suggest that we would ask questions. We had just to learn, and to learn, and to learn, that's all. It's all right to ask children to ask why. And, and unfortunately, some of our te teaching methodologies are very old fashioned. I see my daughter who is nine now, uh, and I see how whenever there is nothing interactive in, the, in what she does, she says, oh, it's boring. <laughs> it's not enough interacting. You know that uh, there are something like 24,000 uh, early childhood centers in a country that is kindergarten, uh, early childhood centres, daycare centres. That is just as many as primary and secondary school centres in South Africa. And 
there's no training program, there's no leadership development for that centers. You just part of a center, a teacher, and you manage it by chance and by trial and error. Sit down, take your books out, start writing, shut up, I don't want to hear from you right now. And that curiosity that little kids have got goes out the window. The thing of keep quiet, I'm in charge. I want to teach, I want to get it finished because we've got to write a test at the end. Assessment plays a huge role and it's these huge time constraints on teachers, you know. I've got to finish something within six weeks or eight weeks, you know. I've only allowed to spend so many hours on this topic. The obvious way to do is that the teachers should, uh, should uh, stimulate the question, should say, Ask a question, or what is your idea on this problem? Oh, you have seen this uh, tree, uh, how did you find it, etc., etc. So there is a way in, in the school itself when uh, children are stimulated to ask questions. There's a saying that says, what if I, if I listen, I remember, but if I do, I understand, and you remember much longer. So doing things, especially children, they are, they want to be active. They, they are active explorers of the world. So you, you can't stand in front and give definitions and explain things. Whereas, especially in the junior primary phase, the children must do and discover for themselves. If we can get that enthusiasm to stay, and that's where the teacher's mind shift needs to come in. It's like, yes, we need to facilitate it, but we're not there to sit down, behave yourself, don't cause a riot, don't throw people out the window. It's got to be a case of, okay, well, what can we learn from this? Okay, so we're throwing Johnny out the window, bad idea, but what would happen if we did, as opposed to don't do it? In terms of uh, how science, technology, engineering, and uh, mathematics, as well as the arts, how, how it features in early childhood development, we see that you know it's, it's not covered adequately. It's not considered as serious. We used to do all these cool experiments, and kids loved doing experiments and blow things up, and there were rockets and all. And so when I finally started teaching, I was like, oh, we used to do the coolest things, and I went and got the Department of Education manual, and every one of them said, demonstration only. Every single one of the experiments that my teacher had made us do clearly said at the top, demonstration only, not to be done by students. But she'd made the decision that we were responsible enough to, even if we weren't, she was still there to look after us. Get on and do it yourself. The feeling of teachers that we don't have enough time to teach technology comes from the, the classic idea that we teach different subjects and disciplines, so there's language and mathematics and history and geography and science. But to me, science is more like an attitude. It's something which underlies all these different things. It is the feeling to connect with your material world. It helps you to, to find words because you have to express your experiences in language to communicate with one another. From these uh, initial language uh, concepts uh, come uh, at the later age, which are more complicated. But uh, you can teach language through uh, science and technology. So at the same time as raising this generation of scientists, we're also coming up with innovations in education, in ICT, um, teaching languages like coding that you know nobody would ever have thought would be necessary 10 years ago. The more uh, that we focus on the science challenges of the future, without really dumbing it down for students, the more creative they, send, they tend to get. Um, one of the things that we did within NASA recently was we made our asteroid hunting database available to middle school students. And there was a group of middle school students that found three new asteroids that the scientists had missed. Anytime an organization, such as a government, undertakes a big initiative, it could be to fly people to the moon, it could be to build the world's most powerful radio telescope, there are challenges that need to be overcome. You know, big science projects aren't normally one thing you know that you're going to do just in the time period of a year. Um, big science projects take a lot of time, they take a lot of planning, um, and they take a long time to implement. The Square Kilometre Ray project is something which going, is going to last for approximately 75 years, probably 100. 
um, and we see the value of this particular big science project in being, you know, feeding this pipeline of scientists, technologists, engineers, mathematicians. If you are um, living in Africa, the impact that the square kilometer array will have on your life, it goes far beyond the astrophysics implications. So that means we, we need to do things differently so that we can really strengthen the base on which the other learning, further learning takes place. I mean, it's important for, for big industry to have well-trained young people. Now, this takes some time, of course. Uh, I mean, they are it's now, uh, say, six or so, and it takes quite some time. But, um, well, you have to start somewhere, and I think we should start now. The, the biggest thing that came out here is the whole idea that creativity is problem solving. And that is what teaching is. Teaching is teaching others to solve their own problems in order to make the world a better place, eventually solving bigger problems.